All right, welcome back to Pharmacology. Uh, this go around, we're going to be talking about activated charcoal. Uh, you can see here on the picture on the right, uh, these come in a uh, suspension. Uh, this is a uh, very, it's charcoal, so it's a very thick, black, uh, tarry like substance. Um, this is a suspension, so uh, you're going to, before use, you're going to have to uh, really shake these things up to reconstitute uh, the suspension. Uh, most of the uh, the charcoal will settle down at the bottom, so uh, before opening it, turn it upside down, shake it really, really good for probably a good minute, uh, and then open it up. Uh, most of these, uh, these are just some different brands, Actidose, Instachar, and so forth. Uh, you can see here on the picture on the left, uh, this one here comes with uh, Sorbitol. And uh, what Sorbitol is, it's a mild laxative, and this is going to help... Um, it's going to help the motility of the medication to uh, help push it out. Uh, that way you uh, get it out of the body as quick as possible. Uh, the class for this, this is an adsorbent. That is not a misspelling. It is a adsorbent. Uh, I want you to p uh, pay special attention to that. Um, the difference between an absorbent and an adsorbent to absorb means to uh, basically to soak up. Uh, this is not what charcoal does. Uh, down at the microscopic level, charcoal has a tremendous amount of surface area. Uh, so what this does is it actually binds to the poisons. Uh, so we call this an adsorbent. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, I would suspect you would see this on National Registry. Uh, and they will try to uh, fool you into picking an absorbent. So make sure you pick... Uh, one with a D, um, so you get it correct. Uh, this is uh, basically an antidote. Uh, the indications for this would be uh, ingested poisons by mouth. Uh, now, typically, most of the poisons we're talking about are going to be a type of solid, uh, some type of solid material, things like Tylenol and so forth. Um, uh, so, like we said before, uh, this the mechanism of action here is it's going to bind with the toxin, uh, so the body cannot uh, absorb it. It can't break it down and metabolize it into the uh, bloodstream. Um, uh, the contraindications here, uh, of course, with anything we're going to put in the mouth, uh, if they have a decreased level of consciousness, uh, if they do not have the ability to control their airway or the con uh, ability to, con uh, to swallow on command, uh, then obviously we could not uh, give this uh, for fear of aspiration. Um, another contraindications uh, are any type of alkalis, acids, corrosives, caustics, petroleum products. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, if you can drink it and it burns, uh, that would be a contraindication. Uh, it's not going to work, and, uh, and there's a few instances where it could actually make it worse. Uh, so we're going to typically stick with a uh, solid type of um, with uh, solid type of toxins. Uh, some of the precautions, uh, since this binds. Uh, and, and it's too large for the body to break it down. Any other medications that were taken orally uh, that is going to be inactivated because of this. Uh, if they have just taken their, um, let's say they just took their beta blockers or blood pressure pills or, or whatever uh, within the last 20 to 30 minutes, uh, and then they accidentally overdose on another medication, uh, we show up and give them activated charcoal, everything in their stomach is going to bind to this uh, so we, we need to keep that in mind uh, someone who has a history of say just hypertension for example if they've just recently taken their medication this is going to stick to it so they're really not going to get their dose uh, for the day uh, some of the side effects uh, typically the next day their stool is going to be very black and tarry uh, this can cause some constipation even though um, most of these carry uh, sorbitol in them. Uh, this can cause constipation. There are a few people out there that uh, this will induce vomiting, but it's not its primary uh, effect. But there are a few people that it will, so you need to uh, make sure you have your suction ready uh, to prevent aspiration. Uh, another uh, another note worth, uh, worth talking about, uh, because this looks like a, uh, a black tarry soup, 
uh, it would probably be helpful because you, you really have to talk your patient into taking this. Uh, it may be beneficial if you can cover the top and put a straw in it so they can't see it. Uh, if you get this uh, stuff on your skin or on your uniform, uh, it's going to stain it for a short time. It's very difficult to get out. Uh, if they see it, they're more than likely not going to want to take it. So if you can kind of cover it up and let them drink it through a straw, um, you may have a better, a better outcome in getting them to actually um, to drink this. Uh, the uh, typical dosage, uh, this is one of the few medications that the adult and the pediatric dose is the same. And this is going to be one gram per kilogram. So make sure you take their, uh, their weight in pounds, divide by 2.2 or cut it in half and take 10%. And for every one kilogram, they get one gram. Uh, so it's very, very typical uh, for, say, a, an, an average adult who weighs, uh, let's say, 200 pounds, that's going to be about 90, uh, about 99 uh, kilos, or somewhere around 95, 99 kilos. Uh, that's, uh, so your typical dose here is actually going to be two of the, of the containers this comes in. Uh, these are supplied uh, usually in 50 grams per bottle. Uh, so most of the time for your average adult, uh, it is not uncommon to have to drink an entire bottle, uh, drink a second bottle, and then sometimes even uh, more of the of a third bottle. Uh, of course, the uh, the route is oral; they have to drink it. Um, anytime we're talking about poisons, uh, you want to consider contacting uh, uh, poison control and possibly medical direction, depending on your local protocols. Uh, the number I have listed here is the national number for poison control, uh, especially if you can find the uh the medication or or whatever material they took uh if you call them they can give you uh, all the information and give you some recommendations um on what to do uh and then uh, if it's uh maybe not quite following within your protocols contact medical direction tell them uh what poison control recommends and then get his recommendation on uh, what to do there uh, i would definitely keep this number in your phone or memorize it um, this is not something you're going to use all the time, but when you need this number, uh, you need to have this handy. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions at all, feel free to hit me up. And if not, you guys get out there and save some lives.